Today, I have the privilege of getting an update from Dr. Francis Dubay from Zen Graphene Solutions. How are you today, Francis? I'm very well. Happy to be here, Tracy. Well, I'll tell you, your stock has had a beautiful movement here in this last year. I think what was your low in the 52-week low is 39 cents, and you're 306 right now, Canadian? Correct. It's been a good year. Now, I know you're all about achieving milestones, so I know you don't want to talk about the stock price. You want to talk about how much you've gotten done. So let's talk about your recent announcement with uh, Trevor RX, your successful inhalation safety testing of ZenGuard enhanced surgical masks. Let's talk. Let's start there, please. Absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that happened with Health Canada and the mass that came out of Quebec were really uh, put a spin on the industry where Health Canada was concerned about the safety of the mask and having graphene particles coming off the mask and being inhaled and what that would do from an, a safety perspective. Well, we had our mask tested um, and we were very happy to report to Health Canada that none, we had zero emissions from our mask of graphene or graphene oxide. So, now, for consumers, that's a great safety profile. They can wear this mask and not worry about any health issues from a, a safety impact. And then, well, of course, we've been uh, demonstrating how much better this mask is compared to what's out there. So um, we really believe that this will be a leading product in the marketplace. Well, of course, the market responded very favorably to this news. But since this news, you also added some very disruptive news. You announced uh, a diesel fuel additive that improves the performance of diesel fuel, just changing the topic completely. <laughs> OK, that was exciting news as well. The market also responded positively to that. So can you tell us more about this technology, please? Yeah, again, we've been focused on R&D for the last three years. Uh, this project is probably about two years in the making. Um, you know, there was a few reports out there, obscure research that we found where graphene or graphene oxide could improve the performance of, of diesel or biodiesel fuels. Um, and we did some preliminary testing and confirmed some of that data. But the challenge was really in finding a way to keep the graphene or the graphene oxide uh, soluble or uh, stable in the fuel. Um, and that's really what we filed a patent on is uh, finding a way and, and you know, filing a patent for it to take the graphene or graphene oxide. We don't, don't want to give out too much of what we're doing here, but uh, finding a way to keep that very stable in fuel. Uh, we've got over three months uh, of data here that's showing that our our fuel additive is very stable in there. It's adding, you know, around 10%. And we've seen some uh, RPM range be as high as 20% on average. So this could be very substantial. Um, you know, the world is all about ESG right now, environmentally uh, more sound products. Uh, uh, fuel consumption is a big issue. So when you consider that there's about a trillion uh, liters of diesel that gets consumed every year, if we can make that diesel fuel 10 to 20% better, you know, we're going to have a, a significant impact on the amount of emissions, uh, you know, greenhouse gases that get uh, um, produced by that. So there's a green angle here to this. There's an economical angle to this. Um, we're very proud of what we're doing in that field, and we think we can actually make a, a difference here uh, for all of us from an environmental standpoint. Of course, you've touched on ESG and how everyone's talking about ESG. Have you been speaking to any funds recently, uh, Francis, or can you comment on that? We've had multiple uh, discussions and we're getting more uh, interest from uh, institutions and high network uh, you know, brokers, individuals. Um, ESG is something that comes up often uh, and we're, we're happy to talk about how we uh, fill a lot of those mandates. Uh, if you look at our corporate presentation, you know, we look at the uh, UN ESG goals and, and we fill, I think, six or seven out of the 14 uh, mandates that they have for ESG. So, um, you know, there's a lot of um, ESG is something that's part of our uh, DNA for, for Zen Graphene and, you know, using uh, our products to help where we can. Um, you know, we really want to let investors know that we're focused on that. So speaking of focus, of course, right now you have real revenue coming in from Zengard, uh, these enhanced surgical masks. Can you tell us how large this market is? And I mean, with COVID-19, a lot of people not wearing masks, for instance, in the American audience, how is this going to impact your sales? Or is this something that has a nice tight niche for you? 
We definitely have a nice tight niche. So the mask we've developed is an ASTM level three mask. Uh, in terms of surgical masks, you can't get a higher designation than that. Um, so this is really aimed at hospitals, long-term care residences, healthcare professionals. Um, we believe that those markets um, are still going to be concerned, uh, you know, dealing with public uh, all the time in healthcare settings. They're definitely want, going to want to keep wearing the best mask available. Um, you know, we know that during 2020, uh, we hit somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.5 trillion masks uh, a year in consumption worldwide. That's a massive number. Um, cut that by half. We're still at uh, 750 billion masks a year. If we capture 1% of that, uh, that's still a big market for us. So uh, we're really going after that uh, high-end market, the healthcare market. And we believe they will want the best protection because they're the ones that are facing, um, you know, people that are either have COVID or suspected of having COVID. So um, we don't see any challenges there from the market demand side. Well, com com compound that, of course, with the diesel fuel market. How large is that market? <laughs> um, as I think I mentioned earlier, it's about a one trillion liter a year uh, market. So um, even if we get 10% of that, 5% of that, um, that's a big market in itself. Um, and if we can, uh, you know, convince government that this is a better way uh, to create uh, fuel and to help the environment, um, you know, we hope that we can get some regulatory help as well along the way, not just to approve the fuel additive, but to uh, potentially mandate it into law. So, you know, we'll see where that goes uh, down the road, but we're pretty excited about that market. Oh, I heard the trillion. I just wanted to make sure everyone out there in investor intel land heard that as well. So we are delighted to have an update from you, Francis. Can you just tell us what we as shareholders should anticipate this next quarter? I mean, is it too late to get in? On the Zen game, I mean, your stock has moved over 369% the last time we calculated, and I believe that number is actually low compared to what it is today. Oh, uh, what I'll tell you is that we feel like we're just at the beginning. We're pre-revenue right now. Uh, you know, we're hoping for health counter approval here in the next little while. Um, but we've got a lot of other developments. We're not sort of a one trick pony, if you will. Um, there's a lot of developments that we're uh, going to be announcing over the summer. So we're not taking a hiatus here during the summer. Like some companies, we are full out during the summer and you're going to see a news flow that reflects that. So, um, it's going to be an exciting summer for Zen and our shareholders. Well, thank you, Francis, so much for the update and congratulations on all your latest announcements. Very exciting for all of us that are shareholders for Zen Graphene Solutions. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Tracy. Have a great day.